Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Today, we're gonna to be planting some cowpeas. So these are the pink eye purple hull cowpeas. They're real pretty. They're really uh, a nice looking cowpea. And the thing is with cowpeas is that they grow really well in my area. I'm in South Texas. It's hot, and then in the summer it gets pretty dry. Now it's humid outside, but we get very little rain. And these are drought and heat tolerant. And so they do very, very well. And they do a couple things. One is they improve the soil because they're a nitrogen fixer. So they're adding nitrogen back into the soil. They also have good root systems. So they're gonna be adding a lot of organic matter into the soil. And also, generally they're disease free, most of it. There are a couple bugs that do plague them. Last year we had a problem with aphids, uh, pretty bad. And, uh, but I, I, you know, I got, on it with some neem oil and that kind of helped. But we did still get a good harvest, decent one. Uh, not, not as good as we could have without that problem. So there are a couple things that can, can plague them. They produce a whole lot of foliage as well. And that foliage can go back into the garden through the compost system. And so, I mean, it's just a win-win on all fronts with this type of crop here in South Texas. Uh, really anywhere that it's hot, these are gonna do really well. I mean, there's certain times through the year that we're hitting 100 degrees every day, and that's okay for these. So I saved you guys from having to watch me till this up. So <laughs> all my little strips here take forever to till up. And so I've got this section. I did have it tilled up before. I grew daikon radish in it to be able to break up the soil a little bit, but I retilled it recombed it and you can see it's nice and even on there so we're going to get to planting this okay for a little more close up you can see what these are so cow peas are actually a bean really so in here it says you want a depth of one inch okay it generally takes seven to ten days to get sprouts and the spacing is uh, three foot rows and three inch spacing between now I have this is about three feet but I'm going to pull them in and they don't have to be three feet apart that's so that way you can walk in between and pick that's if you have multiple sections but i've only got a three foot section all the way down i'm not going to do three foot rows i'm going to do more like two foot and that's because i can pick from one side walk around to the other and pick from that side since i'm only doing two rows so i don't have one of those machines that can make rows for me so i'll show you what i do so i just take the end of my pitchfork here i push down and i just run it and this makes myself a little trench and of course that's not going to give me the perfectly straight trench but i'm not worried about that too much this is about one inch down which is exactly what you want that's what it says so i'll be able to get those beans in one inch down on that trench let's go around the other side and make a secondary trench. There we go, we've got two rows. Now, I'm not sure I have enough seeds for all this, and then I can go buy more seeds if I need. I got these ones at Walmart, I believe. So I'm sure they got more there if I need more. I'm gonna go through and see if there's any rocks in the trenches that would hurt the germination. Now, one thing about these being a nitrogen fixer, it really helps to have a soil inoculant. I don't have any, can't find anywhere that sells it other than online and after shipping. It's like 20 bucks, and for me, I don't find that worth it, so I'm not going to inoculate. I did when I uh, last year when I grew these in one of my uh, raised beds, and you know, we'll see how it does without the inoculant. So there are the black-eyed peas or pink-eyed peas, I guess you would call it. They're a little darker right now because they've dried, but when they come out fresh, they're nice and. Uh, pink what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put one every about three inch if I get two in there I get two yeah so yeah it's about every three inch and it says to sew them at three inch but everywhere I read it recommends six inches. So if we sew at three, we can always thin out. That's it, right there. So we missed some of this, but that's okay. That's still gonna be quite a bit of beans. Now we're just gonna cover these up. And now I'm just gonna use my foot and press this down slightly to get good soil contact. Not a whole lot, you don't wanna put your whole weight just Lightly press it. 
All right, now, of course, we're gonna need to water this. We'll give it a nice, good soaking today. And then I'm gonna come out every other day unless it rains and make sure that this ground is nice and wet. Now, one nice thing about these beans is they, since they're nitrogen fixers, they do not require any fertilizer to grow well. Every once in a while, you might need to give them some potassium or phosphorus, but generally you've got enough of that in the ground to be able to support these just fine. I would say right before they start flowering or right as they flower, maybe a little bit of phosphorus would be really good. Same with that potassium, but you don't need to give them too much nitrogen. In fact, I wouldn't give them any nitrogen. You can, they say, right when they first come up. So if they are little seedlings, sometimes a little nitrogen will give them a kick boost until they can start producing their own, but they actually do. They pull it away from the air and produce more nitrogen themselves. Excuse the train in the background, guys. So that's, that's nice about these. And then they fix the nitrogen into the ground, which means that they add more nitrogen. So then you can follow this up for your next planting with a crop that requires a lot of nitrogen, like corn or lettuces, anything that is a high nitrogen feeder. We got this planted. Today is April 15th. I'll bring you guys back once these sprout, so that way we can see how long it took. And of course, I'll give you guys updates over the next couple months while these are growing. And even I'll talk about the harvesting, when to do that. These were probably some of my favorite to grow last year. And so I wanted to get them in the ground again this year, and this is good timing for me. I mean, it's already today, it's like 90 degrees. These do not like cool temperatures, so you want the temperatures to be pretty high. So late spring is a good time to plant. I don't have any chance of any frosts coming. No chance at all. It would be impossible. <laughs> this is safe, I feel, to plant this because anything getting below like 40 degrees might, might hinder the growth of these. So that's that's now they will grow all summer and then at late summer or so is when i'll be able to start harvesting so for you guys if you live in a different climate where you still get some cool temperatures in april uh you might want to wait till may but generally that, that's anywhere from late march to late may is a good time to plant these depending on where you are and your zones okay so i'm in 8b but someone in like 5a might have trouble growing this in the first place, but if you want to give it a try, you might want to wait until closer to the summer and where you have four months roughly of warm temperatures. So I'll see you guys back in about a week, week and a half once these sprout. So it is April 21st and we have sprouts. Quite a few of them are coming up, but I am missing a few along here. Okay, uh, there's some spaces, but those should come up in the next couple days. I had a couple of these pop up two days ago and then more yesterday and probably will get more by the, by the end of today or tomorrow. And hopefully all these get to sprout. Now, I, this row doesn't have a lot. We see one coming up right there, starting to sprout, but not a whole lot along here. Oh, I'm seeing right there. There's a little sprout coming up, so we should see an, and one right there. So we should start seeing both rows fill out pretty well in the next day or two. So I'm pretty excited about that, guys. And I planted all the way pretty much to that one. <laughs> I think that's the end. And so, you know, should get quite a few of these sprouting, and hopefully we get a good harvest. Now, in this bed, since I had all this section that from here over to here that I couldn't put the beans or the black eyed peas or i guess they're pink eyed peas technically but same thing i planted some watermelon right here so that'll be over here it might creep a little bit into where the beans are and that's okay it'll act as like a living mulch and it'll creep out all out here as well it's kind of sort of part of you know i mean you got the three sisters where people plant beans which technically black eyed peas are beans. They're a bush variety. They're, they don't grow long. Uh, they don't grow tall. They are a bush bean. These are vining beans right here. And But you plant corn, you plant beans, and then you plant squash. And they kind of help each other. So I figure squash and beans can grow fine close together. 
uh, so that's what I'm doing here and and watermelon is not a squash but but it is a vine it, it, it's in the same family they're they're a cucurbit so they're you know uh, cucumber melons squashes all of them are kind of closely related and they they grow similarly so that's what i've got going on here now these take a couple months to harvest so i'll bring you guys back in a video in the near future once i start harvesting these and i'll give you guys updates on how they grow how fast they grow i mean they're they are a bean so they should grow fairly fast come this winter i can then put wheat or something else that likes nitrogen in here and hopefully that will help grow more crops in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you guys could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you guys on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.